Welcome to the Fit Girl Magic Podcast. If you are ready to find your inner magic, develop great habits, and a rock steady mindset to feel confident, comfortable, and fit in your body, you are in the right place. I am Kim Barnes Jefferson, and I'll be giving you weekly doses of health, fitness, and life tips sprinkled with humor and real talk. If you're ready to be consistent without the stress of perfection, magic makers, it's time to slip into your favorite pair of PJs, grab some coffee, kick back, and listen to today's show. Hey, magic makers, it's this week's iTunes review. Amy W. Fitness says, Kim knows her stuff keeps it real on all levels, five stars. Awesome podcast series on relatable topics that women deal with. Kim's advice, along with her sense of humor, is what everyone needs to find their fit girl magic. Well, thank you so much, Amy W. Fitness. That warms my heart. If you haven't yet left your review, please head over to iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast and hit rate, And then hopefully it's a five-star hint and leave me a review. Thanks. Hey, Magic Makers, it's Kim here. And today is all about strength training. Now, I wanted to talk about strength training because it is one of the most, I'd say, underutilized ways to boost your metabolism. And, you know, I was reading, you know, on the socials. And this woman was like, oh, I'm working so hard at the gym. I'm burning all these calories. How do I burn more calories when I exercise? And many of you want to hop on some piece of cardio and do more. Well, what if you were to burn more calories at rest so that when you did exercise, you naturally have that extra beta, 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 basal metabolic rate so that you you will naturally burn more calories. And the only way I know how to do that is strength training, right? And when you talk to most women, they'll go into the gym and they will inevitably pick three to five pound dumbbells. I All the time, you know, when I was teaching classes in person, I would be like, all right, we're, um, you need two weights, a heavy weight and a lighter weight. And everyone in Evolute put three and five pounds. And I was like, oh no. Unless you are my 99-year-old grandmother, put back those freaking three-pound weights. So I'd always have to be five pounds or higher, right? Because so many of us gravitate towards the lighter weights because we think if we lift heavy weights, we're going to get bulky. Well, this isn't video. So if I rolled my eyes any harder, they would fall out of my head. At least that's what my mom told me. Anyone else's mom say that to them? And the shame is that, like I said, if I want to boost my metabolism, I want to get that lean, tight, sexy physique, I got to lift some heavy weights, right? And so, sure, great. Looking good, we all want that. Who doesn't? But it also helps you to alleviate stress, anxiety, depression, build stronger bones. And as we age, we all know, you know, especially as ladies, we are more prone for osteoporosis. And so when you lift weights, the muscle pulls on the bone and the more it pulls on the bone, the stronger your body gets, you know, like I said, burns more calories at rest. You'll burn 72, you'll burn calories up to 72 hours after lifting weights than you will on a, any freaking piece of cardio equipment. Who doesn't want more sleep, more energy. And you know, if it's your jam, a little more of that sex drive, right? Strength training eclipses all forms of exercise when you are trying to get in tip top shape. And so even if you're not trying to get in tip top shape, strength training will trump any exercise that you choose to do that isn't strength training. All right. So I'm going to, today's podcast is all about how can you benefit from strength training and the first and busting myths, right? I love busting myths because I think myths for years have kept so many of you stuck and here you know, keep listening because I want you to get unstuck. First, I need to find the person who started this because it is simply untrue. Weightlifting will make you bulky. Well, it's very hard for you to get bulky. 
Um, men have way more testosterone in their bloodstream than us ladies. So if you have a ridiculously high number of testosterone, uh, testosterone levels, um, you are taking some type of supplementation. It is impossible for you to get bulky, right? You know, um, your brain sends a signal to your muscles to, to help you to build to build the muscle so that you might use it later in the future. It doesn't send a signal that says, hey, make them huge so they kind of look like Hulk Hogan did back in the day. No, that's not how, how it works. Um, weightlifting will accentuate your feminine form so that you deliver, you de- uh, deliver, develop long, sexy muscles without it being an excess of fat that makes you look bulky, right? So if you're not losing weight and you're putting on muscle, then that's probably where where the bulkiness came from, you know, but that's not the case. It's virtually impossible for you to um, put uh, put on muscle like a man, right? Uh, The other thing is like I, I talked about earlier, you know, everyone's like, oh, if I stick with the low weights and there are, you know, celebrity trainers out there. Um, there are other forms of classes out there. They're still trying to sell you that if you only lift between three and five pounds, you're going to get that nice lean tone physique. Well, I don't know what tone is. So if someone can explain what tone is to me, like point it out. I, I, I want to know because you're either, you either have muscle or you don't. Right. So if you can perform 15 or more reputations with the same amount of weight without feeling it, the last few uh, reps feel challenging to lift up. And when I say challenging, I'm talking not about burning, right? Because the burn you feel is lactate acid. That's not muscle building. That is your, your muscle is just fatigued and it needs to start to break down glucose to give you the quick energy burst that you need to continue to lift, right? What I'm talking about is that when I'm doing any sets of reps, the last two to three should be challenging with good form. And if it's not, then I need to up my weight, To get the full benefits of lifting, you need to challenge your muscles and not to the burn, right? The burn, yeah, everyone likes the burn. Everyone likes to sweat. But really, the goal is that we want to break down those muscles so that it can build that muscle back up. All right? And the other myth that I hear is that if I stop lifting weights, the muscle will turn to fat. Well, Muscle and fat are two different processes in your body, right? They won't one, there's no um, metabolic or biological process in your body that says, hey, when this happens, do that. No, not when it comes to muscle to fat, right? It, it, it can't happen. So what, what you might see is that, yes, muscles shrink when they're not being built. And because they're shrinking, they might not have that same visible um, visible look as when they are fully used, but they will never turn the fat. And as we age, yes, absolutely. We lose muscle, but it's not fat. It's just flabby muscle. It's just undeveloped muscle fibers is what you are seeing. So, um, and in my, uh, Invincible 40 guide, I talk about this. I talk about how um, once we hit age 30, we lose anywhere from three to 5% of our muscle mass. um, And that's nature, right? But again, like anything, if we continue to lift in a regular fashion, then you will be able to keep pace with nature. So as nature's trying to take away muscle from you, you're like, oh, nature, I'm still, I'm still here. I'm still fighting the fight. And then you also notice that when you stop lifting weights, your body's not burning as as many calories at rest. And you might be still eating the same amount of calories that you would be eating as when you were lifting. And, you know, you know me, I like to keep it simple. So I always tell people, you know, anywhere from two to four times a week, if you are lifting weights, that's amazing. Again, going back to what I said before, if I'm lifting weights, and the last two to three reps feel 
challenging, but not by because my muscle burning, but because I'm like, oh, lifting uh, it from the beginning to the end. So say I'm doing a bicep curl. So lift, taking my hand from my thighs and moving it up to my shoulders, that feels challenging. I found the right weight, right? Um, this one right here, I, I, I hear this, this next one is you're likely to get hurt lifting weights. Now, here's the thing. If you are physically active on a regular basis, yeah, there you're highly likely that you might pull something, you might strain something, you might trip over something. Absolutely. Right. That's, that's, that's life. You're like, if you are doing any type of movement in your daily routine, it, the potential of something hurting is high. However, every 11 seconds, an older person is treated in the emergency room for a fall. Falls cause serious injury and being up and, and is a rising cost to society, right? You know, you're listening to this and being like, girl, I ain't old. What are you talking about? Well, neither am I. But one of the biggest things, um, when I first started training, I went to a seminar and the woman giving the seminar, she was 75 if she was a day. And it was all about balance. And she talked about balance training and she talked about how the number one reason what takes people 80 and above out of the game is falls. And so now is the time, you know, and most of the people in the room, they were in their thirties. And she's like, now is the time to start building bulletproof balance. So you're not playing catch up in your eighties. So you're not, you know, falling and breaking a hip and like you're naked in the shower and like fireman Fred has to come rescue you. Like that's embarrassing. Now, I say this so that we can start working on that balance and stability. And that balance and stability comes from core exercises, not crunches. From some core exercises, single leg exercises. And instead of just trying to power through, it's really being able to say, can I stand solidly on one foot? Can I feel my core engaged? Can I feel my glutes engaged? Can I feel my the muscles in my leg engaged? Because that's what happens. If you think about if you like slip on ice, right? You know, there's black ice, you're walking down the street and one foot, you know, a heel catches it. Are you able to like engage that core, engage that glute to kind of keep you from falling, falling down? That's the stuff, right? That's the ticket. And so I know for me, one of my main reasons why I continue to work out is that I, when I'm 80, I want to be able to like continue to go for a walk unassisted on my own steam and be able to get up when I fall. You know, um, my mom is, uh, does hospice, which is like, you know, God love her. She has hospice. And so um, she was visiting um, a guy and he um, said, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. She's like, oh, great. So she's like sitting there and then, you know, maybe like 30 minutes go by and she's like, uh, let me check on him. So she's like, hey, Steve, are you okay? And she's, he's like, hey, I fell and I can't get up. Right. So she's like, my mother's like, at first, she's like, oh shit, am I going to see all his man business? But he had his pants on, but he couldn't get up. And so she was like, you know, you know, my mom still lifts and works out, works out. And so she was able to like set him upright. But between, you know, him and her, that she couldn't get him, like he could not assist her in getting himself up on his feet. So they had to call 911. She lives in Florida and that, that's probably half their calls, you know, people not being able to get up when they fall down. So I think I've beat this into beat this horse. So really focus on saying, I need to, I want to be able to lift myself up, right? I don't want 911 to come find me or some hospice woman to come into the bathroom and thank God I was clothed to like help me out. So when you start lifting, it's not about trying to lift a Buick or flip tires, start off slow and smart and get a great coach. All right. Um, the other thing I hear, you'll look like a dude. <sighs> Again, I'm going to tell you, like, we don't have the testosterone. If you have those testosterone levels in your body, someone would have told you by now, right? You would have worked, walk, walked around and you would have had, you know, someone would have tested you because you might have other features, like you might have a beard, right? But you won't. So, um, and you know, when someone's like, oh, you look like a dude. Well, 
what does a dude look like? Can you just explain what a dude looks like? You know, because if having nice muscular structure is not feminine, then having flabby undeveloped muscle, like what's that? Is that, is that feminine? Like explain it to me because that'll probably make someone feel like really stupid because they can't explain it other than they're just repeating something that they've heard and they're just going to keep perpetuating this like ridiculous lie. You know, I'm going to just keep, you know, I'm going to be on my soapbox harping on and on and on about the crazy, amazing health benefits you get from strength training. So train like a man so that, you know, like what we've talked about, you're not, you're able to get up off of the bathroom floor. If you, God forbid you fall, you are also able to, you know, lift a gallon of milk out of your own refrigerator. Um, lift yourself from a seated position without the use of some type of apparatus, right? That's what strength training for me is about. It's about how do I project this into my real life? And, you know, a lot of the exercises that I give are more based on uh, translating into real life activities versus being that badass. Like I can like, you know, deadlift my weight. Great. Deadlifting your weight, I agree with only if you're like, hey, what's the translation into real life, right? There's a lot of people out there that, you know, um, there was a guy I used to work with at the gym and he'd be like, ah, I used to bench press, blah, 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 right? And I was like, well, ladies don't care about that. Like, if I, I don't care about that. Like, I want to be able to like, oh, if I'm bench pressing, it's so that I'm working my pectoral muscles so that like my boobs are perkier, right? So then I don't have to rely so heavily on my bra. That's what, that's what a chest press and pushups are for me. That's what I think about, right? So what do you think about when you're strength training, right? You know, it's like, my goal is that I want to up my metabolic rate. My goal is so that I can eat more at rest. And I want to be able to get out of my own way <laughs> with strength. And I'm a little vain. So I want to look good, right? Like that's one of the main reasons why I lift weights. Do I feel like I'm going to look like a man? No. Even on my, if, even back in the day when I was competing, never felt like I looked like a man. I just looked fit, right? And that's what I always want to do. I want to look like, oh, she looks like she works out. That's the look I'm going for. All right. So back to you. So the other things about cardio strength, you know, like for years and years and years, we're always hearing this cardio. I must do cardio before I build. I must lose before I build. Blah. Right. You don't have to lose the weight, then start to strength train. Like stop that. Right. Just let's stop that. You know, originally, um, Dr. Kenneth Cooper, he's the guy who first coined the phrase aerobics. He was a freaking cardiologist. They want your heart to be special, right? That's their job. That's what they are trained for. What is going on with your heart? Yeah, I want you to have a healthy heart, but muscle is more metabolically active. All the muscles in your body are more metabolically active. So yeah, having a strong heart, fabulous, but having strong overall muscles all over your body That's where you're going to burn more calories at rest, all right? So I've told the story 500 times, so here's 501. Think about um, uh, uh, cardio. Cardio is like a gas stove, right? You know when you turn on the gas, the the flame comes right up. Boom, You you have flame. I turn off the gas, flame goes away. Electric stove. I turn on the electric stove, and I get that burner like red hot. I turn off that burner. I can't put my hand on that burner immediately because my hand will burn. That's strength training. It takes a while for your body to, you know, quote unquote, cool down. So that's why you want more muscle because it is more metabolically active. It is going to take a longer time to cool itself off, right? So that you are going to be burning calories and fat for as much as 72 hours post-workout. So I want you to really start thinking about how much are you focusing on, you know, getting that sweat on with being on some piece of cardio or running or anything like that versus how much time are you spending strength training? Okay. And yeah, cardio, aerobics, whatever is a fine complement to strength training. So I want you to think about it as like, um, if this was an ice cream cone or an ice cream sundae, right? The meat of the ice cream sundae are the scoops of ice cream. And then you put the whipped cream on the nuts and the cherry. That's what cardio is. This whipped cream, nuts, and a cherry. All right. 
So I also want to dive into here about the fat burning zone, right? I, I think this was like in the 80s. The 80s started a lot of things. I think that's when most people started working out. So there is no magic fat burning zone. There is no system inside your body that's like, ooh, she's in the fat burning zone. Let's start to like, you know, crank the fat out. And like, you know, people think it's like a, I think of like as, as a factory, it's like, you know, let's, let's turn the fat machine on. It doesn't work like that. Right. Um, the idea that like all of a sudden you hit the zone and like fat is just being sucked out of your body. Cause you've hit that zone. It's just, it, it's a great visual, but it's too simplistic, right? <laughs> Our bodies are complex machineries. I wish like it would make my, my, my body, my body would make my job so much easier. If like, I was like, Hey, hit these calories and you're just going to be amazing. Hit this heart rate zone and you're going to be amazing. That would be awesome. That would make my job so easy, but it's, there's so many nuances because our body is a complex machinery. And so your body primarily burns a, a combination of stored fats and carbohydrates, right? That's what, that's what it's, that's what it uses for fuel. Um, it's what it prefers for fuel. It will burn muscle, right? And well, that's a larger, larger type of, but primarily it'll burn fat and then it'll, it'll burn carbs. Now, the less active you are at any given moment, the greater percentage of the fuel comes from fat because for, for your body, fat is pretty easy for, for it to burn. As the intensity increases, it's going to burn more carbs. Now, why? Because carbs gives it instant energy. And if I'm working out, it's looking for instant energy and looking for instant energy to give me the energy to continue to work out. Now, ultimately, it is a matter of calories, yes. And the fat burn will take care of itself. So I know that the fat burning zone is a really easy concept to grasp, but let's let's shift away from the focus of, of this being this mythical zone that you must get to in each and every workout, and instead have the focus being on, you know, Let's kick some butt, right? You know, so that we have our workouts at a variety of intensities. We have some lower intensity workouts. We have some higher intensity workouts. We have some mid range workouts so that we keep things um, fresh and exciting. Um, on every Friday, if you follow me on Instagram, I do what I call a fat burning Friday. And every Friday, it's some type of different workout that's done um, with either you know, dumbbells or body weight, things that you can do in, you know, 15 minutes or less to crush your own, own, uh, crush your body. And uh, you can find me at Kim Jefferson coach on Instagram. All right. Now I get it right. Especially now times can be a little bit challenging when it comes to money. And so I hear people when they're like, Oh, strength training is expensive. Um, or it's hard to find weights right now. Now, here's my biggest thing about this. All right, before we get started, is that you can get creative, right? You can, you know, you might have to do more multiple drive bys of local stores. You know, I used to, I, I miss the days when I'd be like, hey, swing by Target or Home Goods or Marshalls, and you'd be able to easily find what you need or go to Amazon, um, you know, here in New England, I think it's a, a national chain, but I could be wrong. It's called play it again sports. And they basically have, you know, uh, use, um, sporting equipment. Like you could go there and easily find that. Right. Um, but given the state of affairs. So now what I, I encourage people to do is like, if you are to, um, gallons of water, right. Drink the water. That's awesome. And then take that water and you can easily fill it with, go to Home Depot and you could find sand, right? Just the, um, the sand that like you would put in a playground, right? Sand or kitty litter. And, you know, if you have a scale at home, just take it, put it on the scale and like pour in, in a, the amount of sand or kitty litter that you want. Like if you want 10 pounds, like pour in 10 pounds of kitty litter. So that way you're able to, you know, create your own weights, right? Um, Body weight, there's so many great, amazing exercises you can do with your body weight. And it's not just doing freaking burpees, right? So here's where it's like, you might have to get creative. And if you are like, I'm not that kind of creative person, hit me up, right? Find me on the social, shoot me an email. I want to help you out. Um, be able to figure, figure this out. How do you make yourself, you know, kind of a fast and furious, if you will, home gym. 
Um, same thing as far as going to the gym, right? There are here in, I think it's a national chain, but here in, you know, the New England area, we have Planet Fitness, right? And they're roughly, you know, 30 bucks a month, right? Go for that. Go, f- you know, give it a shot. Um, and if you're not, you know, it's Rona time. So if you're not feeling comfortable, either wearing the mask or just going to a gym, I get it. You know, use the home the home options. And in my Fit Girl Magic Society, that's one of my pre, uh, my guiding principles is that every exercise that I give, it has to have a home option because I know that sometimes I like to work out at home. You know, maybe you have, maybe you have kids. Uh, maybe you just, if you don't have enough time to get yourself there and back, you know, home is a great option. This is the one that I, 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 I challenge you. It takes too long to see results. Well, it depends on what you're looking for, right? So this is the best way to describe it. Strength training is like cooking, right? When you follow the recipes, you're, you're going to get the results that you're hoping for, right? So feed your body plenty of protein, lift regularly, gradually increase the amount of weight you lift, and your, re- your results will come. Are your results going to come like Amazon Prime? If I order it on Monday, it's going to be on my doorstep on Friday? No. So I always tell people, let's start with let's start with four weeks, right? Consistency for four weeks. So that means 80% of the time you are consistent, right? So are you working out two, three, four, five? You know, how many times a week are you working out? And how many times are you consistently hitting it? Are you, you know, lifting? Two failures, so the last two to three reps of the set feel challenging, but doable. Um, that's where we start, right? Because that when you start lifting weights, you simply we simply fail to um, we simply can't just like burn ca- ugh, burn fat and calories like that, right? We are trying to increase our strength, trying to increase our strength, stamina, and also pay attention to our caloric intake. You know, if we're lift, we're lifting wimpy weights for 15 minutes and we get no other exercise, we're not going to see any changes, right? So start by lifting weights three to four times a week and then increase the load over time. And as you do that, make the best few food choices and the results will come, right? You know, I, 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 the one of the big things I know that it frustrates a lot of people is that there are a lot of it depends out there. But the biggest thing is that you have to be doing something consistently in order to see results. All right. Last but not least, time, right? That's one of the biggest things I hear all the time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I get it, right? You know, time is very precious. Um, you know, we're running these days, right? You know, especially you know, you might be homeschooling your kids or, you know, caring for an elderly parent, just commuting a ridiculous amount of time. I totally get it. So the first thing is that I used to be one of those people that said, oh, in order for me to get a good workout, if I didn't work out for two hours, ugh, I might as well not work out. Well, I still hear this a lot from a lot of women. And right now I can't tell you the last two hour workout that I've had. Right, it's been years since I've done a two-hour workout. Um, my workouts now are anywhere from anywhere from 20, 20 minutes to sixty minutes, and that sixty minutes is me physically going to a class. If I'm at my home doing a workout, it's about thirty minutes, maybe forty-five. So, I'm asking you, you know, you you can see real results in as little as twenty to thirty. 20 to 30 minutes, three to four times a week, right? And it can easily be a 10 minute bout throughout the day, especially if you're working from home. So it's like, could you squeeze in between meetings? Maybe a meeting gets over. So maybe you squeeze in a 10 minute quick workout, right? You know, one of my favorite things are kettlebell swings. Love them, love them to pieces, right? Kettlebell swings, jump rope, love those two things, right? Um, maybe you are do- getting down and you're doing push ups, right? Or Maybe you're doing a wall squat, whatever. Those are the things that, you know, those little things add up over time. You know, one of the, one of the number of things I always tell my clients to do is to put their workouts in, the, in your calendar and make it like an appointment that you can't break, right? So, um, and you decide, right? I'm someone, I sit down on Sunday, like that's my jam. I sit down on Sunday, I'm like, what's happening for the week? And boom, 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 boom. My workouts are mapped out in my week and, and I know. Nine times out of 10, it happens. From time to time, you know, 
there's a couple of like, you know, ish happened. Um, you know, my husband had surgery a couple weeks ago and he didn't sleep well through the night. And so I was planning to work out the next day. So, cause he didn't sleep well, I didn't sleep well. So I was like, I'm exhausted. I'm not working out. So yeah, those things happen. And I was like, okay, where am I going to move this workout to? All right. So that's, that's what I start. That's where, you know, I want you to start thinking about like the easiest things to start with a 24 hour plan. So it's like, you know, today's Tuesday. Great. What could I do tomorrow? Oh, okay. Yeah. I could work out in the morning. Or, oh, I could work out at lunchtime or, oh, I could work out after work or whatever. Pick a time and put it in your calendar and then block it out and, and treat it like an appointment you can't cancel. Treat it like your dentist appointment, right? You know, if you don't, if you blow off your dentist, they're going to charge you whatever they charge you to, to blow you off. So start thinking about your workouts in that perspective. And like I said, it's not doing a 500, um, 500 hours or doing it every day. It's like, can you squeeze in this week? Can you squeeze in three workouts this week? And I'm saying anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, right? Have that like conversation with yourself and just say, am I just making excuses or can I really find 20 minutes somewhere in my week out of seven days, right? I'm only trying to find three. Okay. And then um, just to let, let you know, in January, I'm running a strength training challenge. And if you want to be the first to know about it, check the show notes. That's where I'm going to include this link. But I hope I was able to drive home the point that strength training is what's going to really help build our, our muscle. Strength training is really what's going to help us as we age, fight that aging process. Uh, and then lastly, strength training is going to just help us be able to, to look in the mirror and just be like, hey, how you doing, right? Who doesn't like that part of it, right? Give you that um, nice, lean, sexy, tight physique where you, you know, depending on you, some people want to actually see muscle, but some people also just don't want to see flab. So you decide what that looks like for you. All right questions, comments, concerns, do me a favor, hit me up, email me, hit me up on the socials. If you found this podcast to be amazing, awesome, share it with a friend and leave me a five-star review on Amazon. It helps me to bring, keep bringing you this great, amazing content. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for listening to the Fit Girl Magic Podcast. If you've made it this far, yay. I'm thinking you enjoyed the show. Let's continue the conversation on Instagram. You can find me at Kim Jefferson Coach. In order for me to keep sharing this message, do me a favor and leave me a five-star review on iTunes. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss an episode. New episodes are available every Wednesday. The Fit Girl Magic Podcast is intended to provide you with tips, tools, and strategies that will help you make better decisions about your health. I really appreciate your feedback and your support. Thank you so much.